Hey Thomas, thank you for taking the time to chat. After much consideration, we've made the decision to not move forward at this time. That being said, we'd like to keep your resume on file as our team continues to grow. We really appreciate you taking the time to get to know our team. Best of luck with your current search, and please keep in touch. Thanks again. How's it going, everybody? Today, I had something completely different planned for today's tip from Thomas. But after that email I got this morning, I decided that I'm gonna switch it up and do something that I've been thinking about a lot. And the whole point of this tip from Thomas is something that I think everybody can adapt into their own life some way or another. And that is that failure is a very important part of any success story. So that email is going to be the whole premise of today's tip from Thomas. And it's something that I think everybody in one way or another is going to be able to relate and adapt into their own lifestyle. Everybody's gone through it. Everybody's gonna experience it at one point or another in their life, but it's a matter of how you respond to it that defines what kind of person you are and what kind of person you're gonna become. So with that being said, guys, I'm gonna go and explain a couple key failures I've had in my life that have put me on track to be more successful in my life. Failure number one, like I said, if you know by now, if you watch my videos by now, I played sports. I played sports for a very long time football, track, basketball. A freshman in high school, I was the fourth string, fourth string fullback, not even a running back at that point. My main position in college and the end of high school was running back. As a freshman, I was not fast enough to be a running back. I did not have the right agility to be a running back. I wasn't quick enough to be a running back. I was told that by my coaches. I was on the fourth string B team. So A is like varsity freshman, B is like scrub, you're not good. Four string of the scrubs. That whole year, didn't play. Barely played at all, barely saw the field. Next year, I worked hard because I was that was not gonna happen again. Sophomore year comes, they moved me to running back and I played varsity. And I'm not talking like junior varsity or like sophomore reserve, because there's like different grade levels. So like juniors are normally like junior varsity and then sophomore is a whole nother. So there's like multiple different categories of football that you can play. I'm talking like when you see my high school in the state championship, I'm talking that varsity football team. They put me on that team. Played a little bit, not too much, but my next year, my goal was to be able to play quite a bit. So junior year comes, I play quite a bit. I rotated with the senior running back. So I was a junior, he was a senior. We rotated off every series. So time comes for the state tournament and we were in the quarterfinals. So we had two more games left to win it all. Um, so we're playing to get in the semis and they had me in at this package where you run an option but they never ran the play that would ultimately help us and lead us to a win. And that was the option run. And the reason they didn't want to run it is because my coach told me that he doesn't believe that I'll be able to catch the ball and he doesn't want to worry about me fumbling it and giving it up to the other team. So long story short, we lost that game. The next year is my senior year and I'm ready. You know, I'm like, in my head, I'm like, that's not gonna happen. I'm gonna, I'm gonna prove my coach wrong. I'm gonna prove my teammates wrong. The only person I was really playing for was the people that had my back that whole time and myself to prove to myself that I am as good as I knew I was. My senior year comes and I snapped off. Rushed for over 1300 yards. I only played in I believe eight games. My average was like 180 yards per game. I scored 21 plus touchdowns. After my senior year, I was able to play in the Nebraska All-Star Bowl. So it was a fundraiser shrine bowl for all the Nebraska All-Star players. Multiple different teams, or there were two teams chosen from multiple different schools. Every school um, had their All-Stars pulled and then obviously you're competing against the other school's position players. So I was competing against all the other all-star running backs of Nebraska to start for that all-star team. Long story short, ended up starting for that team. So I not only went off my senior year during high school, I was also nominated to play in the all-star bowl for Nebraska and got a pretty hefty scholarship to go play for college all because I started from being a four string B team fullback 
and I was told multiple times I wasn't fast enough, I wasn't quick enough, I couldn't do it, I wouldn't measure up, I couldn't catch the football. All these people telling me I could not do something only fueled me to do it more and want it that much more. I made the decision ultimately when I thought it was my time to go. It wasn't a coach that fired me, it was my time, I was done with football. So example number two, similar to my first example, I was in high school, freshman year, and in middle school, I went out for the track team. In middle school especially, you were not gonna see me in the fastest heat of anything. I was slow, I was out of shape, not tracks, not track fast, period. So going in with that mentality, you know, other people have told me you're not gonna be fast enough to be on these varsity teams, you're not gonna be fast enough to be on any relays, anything like that. I had that mentality in my head. And it wasn't until sophomore year that I kind of, the same time I did football, I kind of broke out of it. So from having the confidence earlier in the year, at my sophomore year of being on the varsity football team, I kept that momentum going and I decided if I can make varsity football, who's to say I can't make varsity track? So fast forward to the spring, track season starts, and I go out for the sprints. I go out for the 400, the 4x1, the 4x4, and we had an all-star 4x4 team and 4x1 team. So this team the year prior destroyed everybody in the 4x4. So we, uh, we had really good 400 runners, really good 4x400 runners, of course, and our 4x1 team was fast as well. So all these guys were all upper classmen, and, and that year was a learning curve because I did end up on the varsity track team as a sprinter. And I was so good that they put me as a substitute just in case of any of the other guys got hurt, I was the next in line to be on that 4x4 team that was so prestigious and that was like a big honor, especially being an underclassman on such a high level team that won state the year before. So watching them my sophomore year in state, they destroyed the state record in the four by four. They still hold that record. Next year comes my junior year, I decide after one of the seniors had graduated, it's my turn and I'm gonna repeat with them and our school is gonna repeat the four by 400 meter relay. And that was my goal. All year we practiced for it. We won every single meet leading up to it. I met some of my best friends on that team. And my junior year with all the other kids being a year older than me, they were all seniors. The other three guys were all seniors. I raced with them and I was nervous. I had cotton mouth, I couldn't talk, I couldn't breathe and ended up running the fastest leg I've ever ran in a 400, which was a sub 50 seconds. So that's one whole lap in under 50 seconds. And it was the best time of my life. I have one of the best pictures, one of the best memories of that time. And it was an accomplishment. And I was just over the moon about it. I was super happy about it because I fought through so much adversity of people telling me I'm not fast enough or I'm not gonna be able to make that team or I'm just not good enough. There's faster people out there. But not every time is a success story. Like there's been multiple times where I've crashed and I just didn't get back up. But those two times in my life that I got back up and saw the success I had have inspired me to continue doing that. I think if you're not trying, that's when you really fail. If you just stop trying, you just don't get back up. You just ignore it. You just put your head in the sand and just say, throw up that white flag and say, I'm done. That's when you really fail. So I know that that might not be an exact, you know, photography or videography related tip, but I think that you guys can still take that. You're gonna fail in photography. You're gonna fail in videography. You're gonna look back at pictures and be like, what was that? Like, what, what was I thinking? And I think that's great because if you see that, if you notice, wow, that was bad. Like, why did I even try that type of thing? Then you realize that you have made progress. If you look at it and you're still proud of your work you did, two, three months ago. I mean, there's times where two weeks later, I hate what I did. Like my, I think that picture sucked or I think that video sucked. I get happy because I'm like, I am making progress now. I see something so that way I can take something from that failure and learn from it to turn it into something even better down the road. So I hope that you guys can use that tip. I know that it's gonna apply to you guys in one way or another in your life. Everybody fails. You're always gonna fall down. You're always gonna come to obstacles, but it's how you respond to it that defines how you're gonna be and how you're gonna end up. 
Be sure to subscribe. If you like this video, I will be coming with more photography and videography ideas down the road, but I felt like this was a good opportunity for me to share something that I think everybody in general can use. So I hope you can bear it with me. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. And be sure to stay tuned for this week's vlog because it's gonna be hilarious. And I'm answering all your guys' questions that you have asked me. So with that being said, guys, have a great rest of your week. Go create, go make, and go do something that makes you happy. Until next week, guys, I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.